All right, Red Nation, today we're going to be talking about image filters. These apply to x-ray images, CT, MR, even things outside of medical imaging use image filters coming up here at How Radiology Works. The big things we want to cover today is smoothing filters and edge enhancement filters. Coming off of the x-ray system, again, we've talked about there's initial steps which are done in order to make sure the data is well calibrated. We want to make sure it has a proper, what we call lookup table. See our videos about those things. But for today, if the image is a little bit noisy and you'd like to reduce the noise in the image, make the image a little bit smoother, the first thing you could do is apply a smoothing filter. We do know there's trade-offs here. They're going to apply the same operation across the whole image. These ones are nice and simple. We can understand them well. They do have a little bit of a disadvantage in that they can smooth the edges as well as smoothing out the noise. But first off, how does it actually work? I'm going to come over to my sample image right here. I just have a four by four matrix here. Typically on your medical images, you're going to have at least 512 by 512 or 1024 by 1024 or even larger than that in the case of mammography. It's still basically the same thing where when you're talking about that 2D image, which is going to be stored in that DICOM format, see our video about DICOM as well, we go and in each pixel, there's just one number. That picture element or pixel is the smallest element we have. And we're going to represent it by a little tiny square. And that little tiny square has just one number. Inside of that, there's nothing smaller. If you have a kind of image viewer that allows you to do this, you could start to see and identify the actual individual pixels. Typically, if your matrix is large enough, you can't actually see these pixels when you're looking at the image. But this is our input image. This is my filter. In fancy math terms, we call this a kernel. This filter is three by three. I'm going to take this filter and I'm going to place it on my image. And then what I'm going to try and do first is look at what I'm going to try and do first is look at one of the elements and you typically want to have a filter which is symmetric but so centered. I'm going to start by looking at this element right here. This one where I started with the number 6 in my image, but what's going to happen after I apply the filter? Let's go through and we're going to actually do these multiplications like it says here on my little filter. I'm going to have 10 times 1 is 10 plus 8 times 1 is 8 plus 10 times 1 is 10 plus 10 times 1 is 10 plus 6 times 1 is 6 plus 10 plus 14 plus 12 plus 10. And then actually this little kernel here. These numbers here, we want these actually to all add up to 1. Right now, they all add up to 9. We're going to take this whole thing, and then we're going to divide it by 9. And if you do the math, if we add all these things up, what we're going to get, this part right here, is 90. And then we divide that by 9. 90 divided by 9 is just equal to 10. What's going to happen is... I did a calculation of that filter kernel on my image, and then I'm going to plug that number in right here. Then the idea is we would go and we would move our kernel over one, and the center of the kernel right here, this calculation will do the same calculation again where we add all these numbers up. We could do that again for this one right here, Then we'll populate the number right here. We'll add them all up. We'll divide by nine. We'll populate the number right here. This process that I'm showing you here, where we're actually moving this filter across our image, that's a fancy process that we call convolution in math terms. For your purpose, you can just think of this as the filter. How do I get any estimate of the values out here? Because I want my filter to be on actual numbers, right? I can't take this filter and just move it off here because I'm going to be off in the ether. I'm not going to have anything to multiply it by. 
The solution is to apply a little padding. This is a certain kind of pad that I use for air conditioning. There's all types of padding. The simplest kind of padding is what we call replicate padding, where you're gonna take the number that's at the edge and then you're just gonna apply it right off of the edge. And that way you can then still do your same kernel operations because now you have values that are outside as well. There's different types of padding. I'm not gonna cover the details here that you could use. Again, the simplest one is to just take the number at the edge and apply it out. And the idea is here, we're just doing some sort of estimate of what the values would be right outside of the matrix. And then we can actually do our same calculation. The smoothing filter that we just applied, that smoothing filter, if you note, know, we went from a value of six. That value of six was much lower than the neighbors. And we went from a value of six to a value of 10. That value of 10 is basically the average by definition of that little filter that we just did of all the neighbors. We brought it up and we made it more like its neighbors. That's what smoothing filters do. They'll make all the pixels more like their neighbors. If you have little noise spikes that are really high or really low, we're gonna suppress those by using the smoothing filter. If you have edges where that difference is really high between bone and between lung tissue, that's also gonna be suppressed because we're trying to bring everything down and make everything kind of more like its neighbors. On the other hand, imagine your image is fairly clean from a noise perspective, or if you're looking at a long image, you're looking at that with what we call a wide width, actual grayscale values. So you may actually have the ability to perform what we call edge enhancement, which is the opposite of the smoothing. We're trying to actually make things more different such that we can emphasize the areas where there are edges or enhance them, hence the name edge enhancement. Now I've changed what we call the kernel or the filter, and I have an edge enhancement filter. Now, in this case, I'm not gonna have to what we call normalize or divide the filter. I've already done that. I have a filter with these different values of minus one, plus minus one, plus minus one, plus minus one is minus four. And then we also have a five here. If we add all of those up, we get the value of one. Now, what's gonna happen if we actually calculate this edge enhancement filter? If I have a value that's not written here, that means there's essentially zero here. We're gonna ignore that. Then what do we need to do? We need to do minus eight, minus 10, and then plus six times five is 30, minus 10, minus 12, then the value that we get here at the output is minus 10. And you can see, again, what's happening here. What we're trying to do is emphasize the difference because before we were giving them all the same weight or the same sign, now we're giving them different signs. We're saying, if you're very different than your neighbors, we're gonna try and accentuate that here with this edge enhancement filter. We would do the same thing with the edge enhancement filter. We will move that filter across the image and then just continue to apply the same operations or those filter operations in order to get the values in all of the other squares. And we can use the same padding operations, the same idea of padding for edge enhancement. Then when we're done, we're going to get either smoothing or edge enhancement and then you can define all different types of kernels. This right here is what we call a three by three. In medical imaging, a lot of times we'll make these bigger so that we can actually cover more space and we can get kernels. We can get kernels which have even more subtle or more different behavior. What does this look like on an image? The idea here is that you have your original image and then just for the sake of it, I wanna zoom in on this one little square here so that we can see the details and the information a little bit better. So if I zoom in on this original image, you can see an image like this. And this wasn't a very noisy image in the first place, but we can start to suppress any noise 
in the image and the edges also start to become a little bit smoother. If your goal is to look for a fracture in the rib or something like that, that might not be the best operation to apply on this image, but you can get the idea that's the smoothing operation. And then the edge enhancement operation, on the other hand, is actually gonna make the edges a little bit sharper here between, for instance, the rib and the background. All that's happening under the hood on the actual viewer or on the actual packs or on the x-ray or CT system itself is just this application of this filter where we're moving that filter across the image. We're applying those multiply and add operations and then we're filling up our new matrix. Now you know all the details on the smoothing and edge enhancement in a 2D image. Next, see how that applies to a 1D, what we call kernel in CT. We wanna get the same kind of filtering, but in there we do it on the data space such that we can change these parameters on the actual raw data. When the image comes out, it's gonna have these different inherent properties. Coming up next at How Radiology Works.